Hello, welcome back to Learn Physics. In today's topic, we are going to discuss about the nuclear fusion. Okay, in last topic, we covered about nuclear fission. Okay, in nuclear fission means heavier nuclei will be splitting up into lighter nuclei. So, here in nuclear fusion, fusion means fusing together, fusing means joining together. So, light nuclei will be joining together and will be converting to a heavy nuclei. Okay, heavy means compared to the uh, yes, initial uh, uh, nuclei, the next will be little bit more heavier. Okay, so that is what happening in the case of nuclear fusion. Okay, how this will happen? See, one proton and proton together it will form pro deuterium. Proteum, deuterium, it will become deuterium. It's an isotope of hydrogen. Okay, and it is giving an beta plus and neutrino. Okay, and some amount of energy. This is a fusion reaction. Okay, so how it will be happening? If the fusion is happening with the help of temperature, then we will call it as thermonuclear fusion. Okay, with the help of temperature, is uh, if this nuclear fusion is happening, then we can say it as thermonuclear fusion. How this will be, this fusion will be happening? See, two protons, 1H1 and 1H1, coming closer to each other. It should come very much closer to each other. While it is coming closer to each other, what will happen? We know nuclear force is a short range attractive force. So, that will come into effect. Short range nuclear attractive force will be nuclear force will be coming into effect. Okay. So, nuclear force can happen. So, at that time we will identify both are positive charges. If both are positive, Coulomb repulsion also will be coming along with that. So, these nuclei should attain an energy which is greater than this Coulombic repulsion which can overcome this Coulombic repulsion then only nuclear fusion will happen okay so it will it, it should overcome this Coulombic repulsion Coulombic repulsion will be depending on the charge of the nucleus and the uh, radius of nuclei radii radii of the nuclei which is under interaction so the Coulombic repulsion depends on these two factors okay charge of each of the nuclei and the radii of each of the nucleus okay so it will be the coulombic repulsion depends on these two things so we need a high amount of energy to overcome these things okay that is why this nuclear fusion usually will be happening in plasma state. Plasma state it is a it's a fourth state of matter which is in a liquid form. Isn't it? Matter is in a liquid form, there it will be. Then that much amount of energy this heat energy will be there. So the we know you know, because of nuclear fusion only we are getting the from sun we are getting the sunlight energy we are getting isn't it so in sun what is what is the new process which is happening in the sun in sun see protons two protons together will forming deuterium and a uh, uh, beta plus decay will happen and along with that energy is released and beta plus and beta minus together will give us two times the gamma um, particles and energy also will be released and then what will happen this 1H2 deuterium and one other 1H1 together will forming H2 3 and some amount of energy okay so this should happen twice these three processes should happen twice and then we are getting two He23 at that time. So those two He23 together will form He24 and some protons and then high amount of energy will be released as a final product. So we will be getting a, so all together. 
we will be getting some 26.7 mega electron volt of energy will be released when all these process this will happen twice and this will happen once okay so in one process one nuclear fusion we will be obtaining 26.7 mega electron volt of energy this much of high amount of energy is released from sun so that is what uh, we are obtaining in the sunlight with this much of hot uh, this uh, heat energy uh, for the for several years so sun's energy will be there for 5 billion more years it will be existing okay so after that what will happen after that this all if all the protons when it is converting to helium then all the helium under nuclear fusion it will convert to lithium then it will be converting to carbon so all these process in this process what will happen energy after these processes this sun will start to cool down okay then after cooling down it is collapse it will collapse under gravity and it will so outer surface will be outer surface will be uh, becoming very hot and it will be uh, converting as a red giant in that format it will be formed okay after 5 billion years only it will be happening so here here the thing which we need to know is lithium carbon helium is hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon isn't it why it is not converting to beryllium boron and all it's uh, converting to helium lithium then to carbon yes that 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 is the physics okay so here binding energy per nucleon and mass number while we are considered the graph was like this isn't it so here the which is coming to lowest state we won't consider that one okay helium lithium which is coming in the higher state only will be higher binding energy more we only will be converting to nuclear fusion and fusion isn't it so binding energy curve that is the reason we are not obtaining the rest of the nuclei over there okay so this is what happening in the case of nuclear fusion so for uh, nuclear fusion uh, if we want to uh, that's um, in a controlled manner can we do the nuclear fusion so for doing the nuclear fusion itself it, it requires higher amount of heat energy so that is a big question for a uh, scientist because which, which material can withstand this much of uh, 10 to the power of uh, kilo uh, kelvins of energy how this much of higher temperature we can obtain okay that is a big question for the scientists but then also researchers are happening for that one okay so hope for the best okay we will be getting higher amount of energy and uh, we can use this energy in a useful manner okay okay then so this this is the theory portions of this chapter so we will do some of the numericals also okay so the first one is the radioactive isotope d decays according to the sequence d to d1 and then to d2 how it is uh, changing like this it is decaying alpha and this is leaving out beta minus if mass number and atomic number of d2 are 176 and 71 what is the mass number and atomic number of d so d2 mass number is given as 176 and atomic number is given as 71 okay so it is along with that what is emitting beta minus so d71 that is the product which we are getting okay d2 71 176 along with that beta minus beta minus means e minus e minus 1 0 this is the representation of beta minus beta minus means electron electron we can represent it as e minus 1 0 so <coughs> excuse me and e minus 1 0 if beta minus is emitting along with that what will happen anti neutrino also will be emitting so all together how much it will be 71 and minus 1 so it will be 70 okay and d1 will be 70 and 176 both the sides atomic number and mass number should match 
okay so we started from here and we reached it till here okay now this d1 70 176 will be give, getting an alpha also it is emitting an alpha and forming d1 so along with d1 what is there alpha also there along with that obviously energy also will be there along with this okay so this one all together how much it will be 72 and 180 so what is the mass number of d so mass number of d is d is 180 and 72 so this is z and this is a mass number is 180 and uh, atomic number is 72 okay clear this is how we will be finding out so next here some of the graph questions i had given okay so first one number of radioactive nuclei with tai okay how the graph will be n is equal to n0 e to the power minus lambda t isn't it n equals n0 e to the power minus lambda t so n and lambda this time how it is exponential it is varying it is varying exponentially means an exponential decrease it should be isn't it so here number of radioactive nuclei radioactive nuclei means which doesn't go under under uh, undergoing uh, this uh, disintegration because left out nuclei and uh, number we are showing it over here this is time it is very exponentially decreasing n is equal to n0 e to the power minus lambda t so exponential decrease okay that one we are showing over here okay then draw the rate with uh, number of decay rate with number of active nuclei okay decay rate means what is that dn by dt that is the decay rate isn't it activity with the active with the number of active nuclei active nuclei means n okay so how we can represent that one yes minus lambda into n isn't it so dn by dt equals minus lambda into n so it is lambda is a decay constant so it is proportional to minus n so how it will be yes dn by dt and n if i am taking it will be a straight line which is in the negative axis so here next says which has short term mean life see a and b two graphs are given dn by dt and t mean life it is asked dn by dt and t when it is giving with respect to time rate of disintegration is less for b and more for a isn't it rate of disintegration e to the power minus lambda it is decreasing more then lambda will be more for which one lambda is greater for b and less for a so mean life and lambda how it is related 2 equals 1 by lambda if lambda is more for b then which has more shorter mean life b has shorter way in the mean life okay so dn by rate of decay and with respect to time it is more it is more means lambda will be more for b if lambda is more for b means to mean life will be less okay which has shorter mean life b, b will be having shorter mean life okay next one a to b a radioactive decay from a to forming b and then it is forming c so a is initially having n zero atoms okay it has n zero atoms and it is disintegrating okay uh, number of uh, initially in n zero and at a number of atoms in a and b with respect to t so we should draw a graph for the number of atoms in a and b with respect to time like that we should show how we can find out this one n and t so this is a radioactive element for a you can draw right how the uh, this will be varying exponential decrease that one you know okay this is for a and for b this one we already did 
number of radioactive element with respect to time. So for A, it is like this. For B, what will happen? As A, it is an intermediate nuclei, isn't it? As A increases, as A is converting to, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, as A is disintegrating, which is forming, B is forming. Okay, so B will be forming. That means it will be coming to a, uh, yes, number will be increasing for B from 0. Isn't it? This has initially has N0. So from N0 it is converting to, uh, it is decreasing and going like this. Okay, then but B, no, it will be starting from 0 and coming to a higher point. After coming to a higher point, what will happen? It will start to disintegrate because it is again so from there onwards it will be going to a disintegration okay exponential decay okay this is what happening for b okay this is actually a very good question okay a is a drawing the a it is easy for you but for b from initial state it should yes as a is disintegrating b is forming Okay, so B is increasing and after that again it is disintegrating. So it is exponential decay. At that point of zero, infinity it will be coming to zero. Okay, so clear this four graphs. So next just show that the density of nucleus over a wide range of nuclei is constant independent of A. A means Yes, mass number. Okay, it is independent of mass number. How we can find out the density of a nucleus? Density of a nucleus is mass of a nucleus divided by volume of a nucleus. What will be a mass of the nucleus? If M is the mass of a nucleole, if we are considering small m as the mass of nucleole, what will be capital M mass of nucleus? It will be M into A. A is the mass number. Okay. So, mass of, this is mass of nucleus. This is for mass of nucleus. This is for one nucleon. If one nucleon has M mass, what will be the total mass of the nucleus? M into A. Okay. This is mass. Now, how we can find out the volume of a nucleus? Okay, how we get, yes, it is of the form of a sphere, isn't it? So, 4 by 3 pi r cube. How we can find out r? But r equals r0 a to the power 1 by 3. Okay, so v equals 4 by 3 pi into r0 a to the power 1 by 3, the whole power 3. Okay, so then v equals 4 by 3 pi r0 cube into a. This is the volume which we are getting. Okay. Now we can convert to density. Mass already we got it as m into a. Volume now we are getting it as 4 by 3 pi r0 cube into a. So this a and a will get cancelled. We will get it as 3m divided by 4 pi r0 cube. So density of the nucleus over a wide range of nuclei is constant independent of A. So it is independent of A. Now we are checking whether it is constant. Okay, yeah, mass of a nucleon that is constant. R0, R0 is the radius. Listen, R0 is the uh, constant. So it's an empirical constant we learned, isn't it? So this is a constant and it is, it is, that is the statement which is given. So clear all of you, I am winding up for today. So hope all of you understood all these things and many more numericals are there in this chapter. Okay, so many more numericals are there. We will be doing all those numericals and the revision time. Okay, now hope all of you understood all those things. If you like the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And your doubts and all I am expecting in the comment box. Thank you for watching. Bye.